Hi everyone, Kara here from PRC. I wanted to take a minute to show you the new uh, features added to our software version 2.0. Um, first thing I want to cover is um, the look and feel of the software, how it can now be changed. So the first thing we're going to look at are the skins. So if I head into the toolbox and then I go to the feedback menu and then I look over here to the skin options I have currently I'm in that classic display if I arrow up um, I am now on the skin number one which we've had um, but if I arrow up again skin number two is new you'll see we have some new rounded edges to these keys so I think that looks and feels really nice the next thing you can do is uh, which is new is add um, key visual feedback so if I turn this on, what you're going to see is um, the key, you'll see that black sort of highlighted color. That's the visual feedback now you get when you select a key if you have this on. So you'll see it there, and there again, and there. So that's what that looks like. If I head back into the toolbox, go back into my feedback menu, back to my skins options, the other new nice feature is uh, key padding. So what key padding does is it increases or decreases the space between each key. Right now you can see I have key padding off, um, but I'm going to turn it on and you're going to see as I turn it up, maybe I'll put it up to 10 and then I'll head out to my vocabulary. So, and you're going to see now that the keys are um, nicely spaced apart. This can be really helpful if you're looking at um, direct selection or eye gaze. It might draw your eye to the, the center of the key more, um, you know, providing you know, better access and targeting for keys for sure. And I think too, it just gives it a nice sort of new uh, modern look as well, which is great. And that's on 10, but let's go in now and take a look um, maybe at five. So I'm gonna go back to our skin options and then arrow down and you'll see what five looks like if we go to our vocabulary. So just a little bit less. So you can, um, you know, like I said, increase or decrease the space in between each key. So that's uh, new for us. And I think it's a really nice, uh, great new feature. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, the ability, the new ability to uh, create custom grid sizes. So traditionally Unity and um, the software's had 4, 8, 15, 45, 60, 84, and 144 locations, those grid sizes. Now you can make uh, a custom grid size anywhere from nine rows tall to 16 columns across. So let me show you that. Once again, we're gonna head into the toolbox and I'll go to um, create page. I'm just gonna call this test and say, okay. You'll see I have my sort of standard grid size of 60, but if I want to choose a custom grid size, I'm going to select that. And maybe I'll do uh, 4 by 9, so that's going to give me 36. And then I'll say OK. And you'll see my grid size is 4 by 9. And then I'll say OK again. And then I have um, a 36 location grid. So in addition to custom grid sizes, uh, the other thing that was added to the software in 2.0 is the ability to change um, the size of any particular key. So I'm gonna show you that. So you'll do your setup key here, or you could just do right click setup key, select the key you wish to modify. So I'm gonna change the size of that key. And then I'm gonna come down here to the bottom and say choose a custom key size. And then from there, I'm gonna think, um, I want my key to be, um, two rows and uh, two columns big. And then I'm just gonna say okay, and um, choose next key to define. So you'll see now I have got um, one single key on the screen that is um, two rows by two columns. I'm gonna do the same thing uh, with this key here. So I'm gonna choose that key to define. And then I'm gonna say, um, choose a custom key size. And then once again, uh, two by two. And then I'm going to select okay. And if I want, I can keep doing that. But you'll see now I have two larger buttons um, in the field of a uh, four by nine or 36 grid. And that's uh, new for us and I think can be used in lots of new and different ways. 
All right, the next thing I want to show you is the new uh, word prediction tool that can be assigned to any key, even uh, custom key sizes like this one. So what I'm going to do is um, show you this in the context of an alphabet. So I'm going to first uh, get out of here. And then let's head back to our vocabulary. And I'm going to go to the um, keyboard. So what I'm going to do is um, I have two empty keys here, and this is where I'm just going to show you. Not to say that I would want my word prediction keys here, but this is where I'm going to make this these two keys one key and add the word prediction tool in here. Um, historically, um, in the software, when you had word prediction on, it was going to be all of your predict words show up in this uh, white bar across the top here. So if I'm thinking of the word um, really, you'll see it right here. And this was the um, place that you could go and select the predicted word. Now what you can do is have word prediction also show up in the grid, which is really nice if you're using a key guard and you have trouble accessing um, this bar up here, or maybe you're using eye gaze and you need a larger key size to gaze upon. So you'll have um, better access to word prediction, I think. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to right click on this key and say setup. And then I'm going to say choose custom key size, and it's going to be one row by two columns, and I'll say OK. And then the next thing I'm going to do is insert that word prediction tool. So spell message or define key function. In this case, I'm defining the key function. So I'm going to select this key right here. And then I'm going to say insert tool. And the tool that I'm looking for is the word prediction tool. So I'm just going to select more items, and I see it right here, word prediction key. And there it is. And then I'm going to say OK again and OK again. So now you'll see that predicted word really is showing up in this um, large key at the bottom. Maybe I'm thinking of the word elephant, and there it is. It shows up here as well as here. So I think that is really neat, and that's going to be a nice feature for individuals um, to access word prediction. All right, the next thing I want to cover is we've added some new functionality for individuals who use eye gaze or switches. Um, so we have some new visual feedback options and adjustments for both scanning and eye gaze. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to head into the toolbox and go into the access method menu. And you can see I'm currently in touch. I'm actually going to choose a different access method and show you this visual feedback in scanning. So let's do um, two switches. And let's do two switch step scan row column. That sounds good. All right, so once I'm set to two switch step scanning, I can adjust my highlight settings. So I'm going to select this here. And you're going to see I have lots of different um, ways that I can highlight a key when I'm scanning or during eye gaze. So here we have the outline and the width is medium. If I arrow up, I can do inverted or outline in inverted or fill, outline and fill, and those are your uh, choices. You can change the um, width of the outline as well. I think I'll keep it at medium though, and I think I'm going to do um, outline and invert. That's what I'll show you. Now you can change the um, color of the outline um, as well. So now I'm just going to say OK. OK again and go to home and I'll show you what this looks like. If you don't know um, our past software, the free demo software you can download from our website. If you ever want to emulate switch scanning, you're going to use the numbers one and two on your keyboard of your computer. So I'll select one and you'll see the highlight. Select it again and you'll see it, the scan advances forward. So remember you can set the highlight color for both switch scanning and eye gaze. The other thing, a uh, new setting for switches is, let me head in there first, we're going to go to the toolbox and then the access method menu. You can um, set custom switch times. So what does this mean? This means that you can independently set the acceptance time and the release time for multiple switches. So an example of this is maybe you have a two switch step scanner and they have a switch by their head and then maybe one at their knee. You can set the acceptance time or the release time of the switch at the head different than that of the one at the knee. So once again, um, if your switch was maybe at your head, 
you can um, have a set um, acceptance time and release time and then if another switch was at your knee you can have a different acceptance time and release time and you can do that for up to five switches the other thing to remember is if we're talking about access that key padding um, is really going to be nice for um, individuals using eye gaze so remember that too